Today my guest is Dr. David Truxell. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Um, let's talk about uh, Team Foundation Server. All right. Uh, tell me about Just give me a, the elevator pitch. What is TFS? Uh, so Team Foundation Server is Microsoft's, um, I guess, server-based tool that you're using to, for the application lifecycle, you know, um, management process. So for developers, what they're doing during developing software and for managers and project managers and their needs for that same process. All right, and how does that help? Uh, uh, project managers, developers, let's start with developers. How does, it help, how does it help developers? Sure, well there's a bunch of tools for developers. The main tool that everybody thinks of TFS as is source control. I check in my files, I check out my files, I build my project, you know, do maybe continuous integration, I'm running my unit tests, I want to make sure that everything is okay. The kind of daily tasks that developers are doing when they're working in a team, it's okay. the name, right? So they're doing a lot of those kinds of tasks towards the code. They also have some non-code tasks that are important to developers like bug tracking. So TFS allows someone to enter in a bug and you can, as a developer, relate that bug to a check-in to a set of code that you've changed, you know, and keep track of that. So we can and it, and it happens right inside of Visual Studio. It's integrated in my IDE, so I'm not going into four places to do all these things. Okay, so right inside your IDE, there's a place to uh, uh, do your check-ins for right. source control. Yep. There's a place to uh, get bugs that are assigned to you and then resolve those bugs or... Uh, right. Um, Mark and resolve or, or, you know, unrepeatable or whatever. Okay. You know, whatever your process dictates, those things are all malleable. You can change them based on the need of your company. Okay, uh, and what other tools are there that help developers? Um, well, we talked a little bit about the build tool, right? There's a, there's a, a continuous integration tool or build tool called MS Build. All right, define that term, continuous integration. Continuous okay. integration is um, at some frequent interval building the entire project and making sure that it does build, that it does pass the unit tests if you've included unit tests and that it is okay. Um, sometimes those even include deployments out to other test environments perhaps or development environments. Okay, and so how does TFS help with this? Well, TFS has this MS Build tool that, of course, builds the code, but it also has numerous other tasks that allow us to do that. So I can have MS Build run whenever I want. I can have it run every time someone checks in a file. I can have it run every day at 2. I can have it run every day at 2 and 7. I can have it run, you know, just once a week. I can do all kinds of things to control it. Okay. So... It's just it's for compiling code, and you also mentioned unit testing. Sure, it'll run it up to that. Yep, it'll run your unit tests. Okay, um, and I'll actually do anything that has an executable because you can edit the project file that it uses that MS Build uses to do all kinds of stuff. So I could, for instance, if I was using um, Nant instead of MS Build to run my unit tests. Mm -hmm. Nant is an open source automated build tool. Right. So I, I could actually use NAT and wire that up inside of MS Build. I could have it call NAT if I really want it. Okay. I could have it call you know anything, any executable that's outside. Okay. And you the project file. What does that look like? Um, it's just a big XML file. Okay. So you have to. It's got a, a defined schema, and you have to follow within the parameters of their schema. All right. How do I know what that schema looks like? Is that documented somewhere? Or um, it is documented. Okay. Uh, and there are tools as well. There's there's actually a bunch of open source tools. And even some third-party tools to help you manage MS Build files. Okay, maybe give us some IntelliSense or a yep. graphical UI or something like that on top of it. Yep, definitely. And there are lots of plugins. So, for instance, if I wanted MS Build to build my VB6 project, which is clearly not part of Visual Studio anymore, mm -hmm. you can. There are, you know, plugins you can get for MS Build to cause those compiles to happen. A bit of love for the VB6 guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it's been left it's, behind for so long. It's still there. It hasn't <laughs> gone away. Uh, right, yeah. What else? Um, so, for managers, there's a lot of stuff too. Well, let's go back for the developers. Right. We talked about bug tracking. There's also tasks and work items. Um, and it's all process dependent. So, what do you mean by that process dependent? When I create a project in TFS, which is different than a Visual Studio project, it's just a container. Okay. I choose a process that I'm going to relate to that. There are two out of the box processes. They come with TFS, which is CFMI and, and Agile, okay. MSF Agile. And uh, it has, based on that process, certain 
let's call them work items that are tasks, tests, bugs, etc., that are based on that process. Now there's plenty of um, non-standard processes that people have built that are open source that you can get and it's very easy to add them to TFS. Um, we even have one in Sagetti for testing for our, our team app process okay. that you can get and add into that and it changes the kinds of work items that are available. Okay, so the team app process is a, it's a it's process a for building applications that's focused around testing. Right. Okay. Uh, how do you get that? Um, it's free from Sagetti. Sagetti.com? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. There, there's a URL. We can post that if you want. Okay. So you can get that, you can install it, and it, it adds those those work items for that particular process. Okay. So like in, for instance... So a bug is a work item. Yeah, a bug is a work item. There are tasks. There are risks. Tasks and risks are also work items. Yep. Okay. And you can associate the, all those things back with with check-ins, with, with your source code, so you can relate them. Okay. So let me get this straight. So when I'm when I'm checking in, I make a change to some uh, .cs file, some code module. I check it back into the source control repository, and as I'm checking in, I say this check-in, the code that I, the change that I just made, is related to this bug. Is a fix for this bug, or is a work toward finishing this task. Yep, that's correct. Something like that, okay. And so you can track that so that later on when, say, that bug comes back or someone reports that bug again, you think, well, didn't we fix that bug? Mm -hmm. We can go back and say, and look at, at the changes that were associated with that bug the first time and see what was really fixed okay. instead of trying to guess. Right. You know, we thought we fixed that. We, and fixed someone said, we changed uh, foo.cs. Well, let's look at foo.cs and see what actually did change. Exactly, and, and TFS keeps a history of your check-ins. So I could actually compare that check-in of foo.cs to the one it is right now, for instance. Okay. So I could skip over, say it's been checked in four times since then, I could compare the one four times ago with the current one and see what the differences yes. are. Yes, sometimes those changes get uh, undone. Yes. And we don't know about it. Yep. So that would be a good tool for that. All right. Um, all right, so that's, that kind of covers the developer side of things. We're all, sure. And everything you said, we're working inside of Visual Studio. Right. Uh, we're in the IDE. Okay. Uh, and, uh, but it's also a tool, TFS is also a tool for project managers. Right. And project managers, most of the ones I know, do not have Visual Studio installed on their machine. Right. And they don't have to. There is a version of Visual Studio called Team Explorer that's free. Okay. You can install and it has just the TFS oriented tools. Hmm. So they can use that same GUI if they want. There is a free um, web-based version of TFS that was once a third-party tool that Microsoft purchased, and it's available for TFS 2008. So I can install that, and then it gives me a website that has all the same functionality that I have inside of Visual Studio. Okay. So they can work through that. There's also, when you generate your processes in your, for your project in Visual Studio, it also generates a SharePoint site. The SharePoint site has a lot of that same functionality, but not all of it. The SharePoint site is more limited than the website. Okay. Who uses the SharePoint site then? Well, actually, TFS uses the SharePoint site. Okay. And what what, uh, what rules on your project? What team members are your project? Oh, are those well, the project managers using it? Project managers can use it. You know, people outside the project who might want to see some of that data, because some of the reports are there. So there are a good number of out of the box reports that report on the activity that's going on. So if I, for instance, want to find out the rate of bugs being entered and closed, mm -hmm. which project managers care about, right? right? And that's actually a mark of when you're getting close to release that you should start getting fewer opened and more closed. Right. So they can track that. So there's reports that track that that come out of the box with TFS. And those reports are available inside Visual Studio, but also in the website and also in SharePoint. Okay. So I can see that anywhere. All right. Uh, and uh, what else are project managers interested in besides, uh, they, they're not interested so much in, they don't check in source code, they don't check out source code. No. Um, so, so they're, they're obviously they're interested in those work items and the tasks because they're the ones assigning the tasks and tracking the tasks being done or not done. Okay. They are interested in those risks, they want to relate risks to bugs and things like that. They are interested, of course, in the progress of things, right, and there's, because you're doing check-ins and closing work items or opening bugs or any of those things, you can see those in the reports. Okay. Sounds like they're mostly interested in the reporting. Sure, because that's, that's what a project manager is doing, is they're keeping track of the project, and they can report on a large team. You know, if you have one project manager and you have 12 developers, 
They can't walk around from person to person. How you, how's it going today? What have you done? Oh, well, they can't. I've seen them. Do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best use of their time, I would bet. Right, or mine. <laughs> right. So the, the idea of the tool is to try and you know, get away from that and give them some yeah. automated ways to f see the progress without having to speak to everybody every 10 minutes to find out what's going on. Okay. Uh, any other advantages to TFS? Um, well, a big advantage is that it's all wrapped up together. You know, as a developer, I like to have it all in the IDE that I'm not flipping anywhere else, that I can see those things right there. Right. I pull up my, my bugs that are assigned to me. I see it there. I don't have to go to a website. I don't have to have, you know, multiple windows. Uh, and it's all related. I can relate that stuff right there. Um, before, when I commented, I said the TFS uses SharePoint. You know, say a work item or a bug, I can attach documents, like a screenshot for a bug. Mm -hmm. Or a Word document that's maybe something about, let's say there's been a change to a feature, that there's been a change request, and maybe I want to relate that, that documentation to a, a work item. Give the developer a little bit more information as to what he has to work on. Exactly. And, and those things are stored in, in that SharePoint site. Some mm -hmm. documents, it's using SharePoint as a document repository, because that's what SharePoint's good for. And it's one of its strengths, is document, you know, storing and right, exactly. finding documents. Um, so let me ask you this, um, there's, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, source control, reporting, work item tracking, bug tracking, um, all these things, there, there are tools out there, there are open source tools that are free. Yep. Why would I buy TFS when I can get all this other stuff out there for free and just install that? Well, you don't have to put it all together, number one, right? I, I install it, I configure it one time, and I've got all my stuff, mm -hmm. as opposed to I've got these different pieces, now I have to integrate them somehow myself. Okay. So the integration piece is done, which is good. Integration is tough sometimes. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having those individual pieces. They might work better for you. It depends on your process. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, and then uh, talk a little bit about the cost of it. I, I, I know we're in the transition period here because it's, um, it's early May of 2010. And Visual Studio 2010 just came out, and a new version of TFS just shipped. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, and so uh, the pricing models changed a little bit too. Right. So, so in TFS 2008, you had to buy the server. Okay. And it, not very expensive. And in all reality, you know, it's a few thousand dollars. It's not like it's twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollars kind not of very software. relative to a lot of enterprise yes, software. Yes, exactly. If I was, you know, I would suspect that there are other source control systems that are more costly. Sure. That are, you know, just source control. So with TFS twenty ten that's not the case anymore that that it's that it's free the server software which you're paying per seat to use it. So the, the people using it are paying. So if they but if they have MSDN licenses it's part of the part of that price. Okay. So uh, if your Visual Studio is a an MSDN copy of Visual Studio you automatically out of the box get a, get a connection to the TFS server, right. and the TFS server is free. So for a lot of organizations, there's no incremental cost of implementing TFS. Right, and one of the, one of the things that I, I like that they've done with TFS 2010 is now the install has changed. So I no longer have to have SharePoint, I no longer have to have reporting services if I don't want to do that. Mm. So if I want to start out just doing source control and maybe add the process pieces later, I can install just that part of, it, of TFS as opposed to trying to get all the pieces together and working at once. That's been one of the big criticisms of TFS in the past is that there's a lot of working parts because it connects to SharePoint, it connects to reporting services, and that sometimes those things are difficult in an enterprise to get all working together yeah. with all the accounts and permissions and, you know, I guess gears that you have to have oiled just right to make all that stuff talk. Uh, you know, I, I would add to that, the um, not only is the, the, the software integration difficult, but it's also kind of daunting to uh, go into an organization that has very little process and say, here, here's TFS. Starting tomorrow, we're going to start implementing source control, bug tracking, work item tracking, reporting, burn down charts. That's overwhelming. Uh, and uh, I, my experience is when you try to do that, try to do that all at once, that you're doomed for failure. People become overwhelmed and discouraged because they can't do it all. Just implementing source control. Is a good starting point. I agree, and you know, you and I have talked before. There are plenty of we're consultants. We go to lots of other clients to work, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of places that aren't using source control. Right. And it's it's a risk, really, for them. Huge risk. So you know, 
with TFS 2010, the price coming down, I think that it's going to put us in a position to help them mitigate that risk. Right, yeah, and, and I think this just does a nice, nice wedge to say, hey, implement this uh, source control system, use it for a couple of months, and now, a couple months later, you can say, you know, this tool that you're already using, it can do bug, bug tracking. And it, you can start that conversation. Right. And, and kind of slowly guide them along without overwhelming them. I agree. And the other thing that I think uh, one of the big mistakes people make with TFS is they assume that out of the box it's good. Um, all those bugs, work items, have a lot of fields on them. And they're that way because Microsoft wants us to know what's possible mm -hmm. and make sure that we're, we're seeing all those things. But in reality, we don't want all those things. Each organization does it slightly different. So they may not want some of those fields. We can take them off. They may want fields that aren't there. We can add them. Okay. And that should be the part of every implementing TFS when you're implementing process is modifying those items. Okay. Simplify it for the people that are actually doing the data entry. Right. Make it fit your process instead of trying to make your process fit the tool. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, anything else we tell us? Um, well, TFS 2010 is out. There's some fantastic functionality there. Um, I'll give you my the one I'm most excited about is the gated check-in. Oh, I like that. That's yes. What it and what it is is uh, when you go to check in your files as a developer, it performs a build before accepting the check-in. And if the build fails, check-in not accepted. So now somebody can't break the build at 4.55, walk out the door at 5 o'clock, and everybody else who's staying until 6 is left holding the bag. Uh, does that happen? Uh, that happens. That happens. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, two, there's two of those people. There's the guy who checks in and leaves, uh -huh. and everyone's you know, out of luck for the rest of the night. And then there's the guy who checks in at 10 o'clock and leaves, and first thing in the morning, everybody can't do anything because the bill is broken from what he did at 10 o'clock. Oh, uh, yeah, he sleeps till noon because he was here till 10. That's right. So there's the <laughs> early guy and the late guy. Right. Uh, and so that, that's, I, that's, that's a lot of killing me because we've so been almost there for a long time yeah. when the, the build gets done automatically after the check-in, immediately right. after the check-in, and we know right away that it's been broken, but now we're mo just moving it a few seconds earlier and saying, don't do the check-in if the build fails. Right. So I, I think that that's going to be actually a big productivity boost. If you ever, yeah. ever worked on a big team, you know that someone breaking the build can just take the productivity right into the mud. Uh, it is, yeah. That's why they have to wear the cone of shame. Exactly. When they, <laughs> when they break it. Yep. Uh, all right. Any closing thoughts? Uh, just if you're not using source control, you should start using source control. I agree 100%. Uh, you, tell us, uh, you're online, right? What's your uh, online presence? Oh, well, I have a blog at, at davidtruxel.com. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm Dave Trux. All right. Dave, thanks a lot. Really thanks, appreciate Dave. it. Well, if you're going to be my friend, you should be using source control technology. <laughs>